Uh, I mentioned the Bruins a second ago. I purposely left them out last week because I know we talk about them a lot, but when they're playing this good, we have to talk about them. The only team Jersey's chasing as of Monday afternoon, the Bruins, they're hitting the record books as well. They've been ragged on everybody. Granted, they've had some cupcakes. Did you see the game Saturday night Saturday night versus the Blackhawks? That looked I've like- pretty much <sighs> seen all of them. Uh, Saturday night I was out to dinner, but we could see it uh, from the table. It's just... I don't remember um, seeing a team like this to start a season in a long time. I mean, this is utter shit kickings. And I respect you bringing up that the schedule hasn't exactly been tough. But now I think they got coming up in the next nine. I believe they have Tampa twice, Florida twice, Carolina twice, Vegas twice. I know I'm saying everyone's twice. It's not everyone, (laughs) but they have the next nine's difficult. Besides, they got the Coyotes in there, I think. Shut up. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, call Colorado twice, the cup champs. But yeah, they look like the globe trials. Granted, the Blackhawks, they, the front office is sucking hot for Badad, but they look like they were on the power play. I had to count the Blackhawks on the ice like five times during the game. It was it was the, insane. It, it was and, insane. And, and 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 there's so many guys you can pop their tire. We'll start off with Patrice Bergeron, who I've said since the show began, is just one of the all-time greats, a Hall of Famer, no doubt, first ballot. For him to be one point away, and tonight they're in Tampa, it could be tonight, for him to be one point away from a 1,000 points and have the, the the um when everyone thinks of him, the, it's the defense, it's the two-way play, and, like, this guy's still a 1,000-point guy. It's just amazing to watch him continue. Pasternak is playing better than he ever has. Oh, my God. He looks like he's at a completely different level, and what a season to have it because he's going to get paid up the hoop. He's going to crush the Bruins, although maybe he won't. Maybe he'll be a part of that. Kent Hughes talking about Patrice Bergeron always taking less. That was on the Chris Nyland podcast. We can get into that a little bit. But then I look at the rest of the team. There's so many guys. You, when your team's this good, it's like every guy's doing a job, so you can't talk about everyone. But I said to my buddy, when Charlie Coyle's center in the fucking third line, you know you have a Stanley Cup possible team. And and I and Hampus Lindholm, what he did with McAvoy out, holy shit. I mean, he's out in Anaheim, and you know a good player when you see him, but I didn't know he was this good. The way he carries the puck, the amount of minutes he could play, just an incredible player. McAvoy looks like he didn't even have surgery. It's like, what happened to guys struggling after surgery? Marshawn had 14 hip surgeries. He's fucking 14 (laughs) points in 10 games. I came back from one ankle surgery. I couldn't even skate anymore. These guys are just, it's its shocking. And the amount of depth they have. And Matt Murley, what a loser. One of my best friends, an amazing guy. Awesome. Check out Chicks, et cetera. New, and he's got a new name coming out soon. He's a loser, though. He talked to us about Montgomery. He talked to us about this guy is one of the best coaches he's ever seen. Why isn't Merle's up 50 grand betting on the Bruins this year? He hasn't won a dollar on him. He's an idiot. But Montgomery just gets through to these guys. And and Linus Allmark, there's just so many different players you could mention. But look around the league and look at this lineup up and down, and you can't tell me. And without, like, the start is one thing. But now you look at how they're playing and you see where guys are slotting and they they could win the Stanley Cup. Are you fucking kidding me? And, And, guys, I saw somewhere. What if they get in on Patrick Kane? Home. What if imagine the top six if they somehow got Patrick Kane? Because Patrick Kane's going somewhere. We haven't mentioned that. That's we happening. haven't mentioned the Bruins at all. And how, nobody how much mentions they, the Bruins, but this how, is it. How, how much this do they it. have in cap space? I, I, I don't know. It would have to it, the cap's an issue. But the Bruins are as all in as a team has ever been. So don't sleep on that. Wow. What a fucking Think about it. This is it. This is legit it for the Bruins this season. All right. Get your hands out of your pants. I'm all in. I'm all in with. I love that. Give me Patrick Kane to Boston right now. And what the fuck? David Krejci, what did he go over to check and lose (laughs) nine years of his, like, uh, what the hell happened? No, he was. He he looks better than he ever looked. No, he was in Yager's hyperbaric chamber for the year. true. Forgot about that. That's drinking out of the fountain of youth. Butt chugging out of it. He's um, so good. Well, let's have G chime in. He's another Bruins fan. Well, I was going to ask you guys quickly. Uh, it seems yeah. like Derek Forbert's getting a lot of love online. He's a shot block, a machine, a good depth defenseman. He's been I injured, wanna... I think, though. Well, he. Yeah, he so I thought he came. Ba- I thought he came back into the lineup because I saw some tweets like Forbert's back. Forbert's back. Where I'm like, wow, this guy's. Did he play the other good. night? No, people he, he, are loving him though, Biz. Oh, like okay, he's been yeah. like the guy that every all the Bruins fans are like. He's a shot blocking machine. He he lives and breathes Bruins hockey. Yeah, I, the, the, I hey, I'm asking. I'll be the first one to tell you. I have not been watching the Bruins a ton. I've been watching other teams. I mean, fuck, I've been watching the Kraken out west here for fucking five. Maybe I should switch I, I, it over. Before G goes, we interviewed him. I I got to find out what Felino did this summer too. 
Yes. People are saying he's fine. They help biz this guy. I know you haven't seen him. He's snapping the puck around. He had a couple assists the other night. He looks like fucking McDavid. Well, that was a big concern because, like, basically the way he came into the year was he signed what a two year deal at eight million. So he's making four million a year. And that's an that's a lot of money to have on your fourth line. And you no, know, he didn't play that great last year. So to see him have a bounce back year, you know that something changed about his like uh his training regimen. I don't know if he had an injury last year that he wasn't really letting people know about, but it seems like everyone's just fucking buzzing right now for the Bruins, G. You can't say that Hampus Lindholm isn't a Norris candidate at this point in the year. Whoa, you know? I don't know. You well, tell point me. Point per game? Yeah, I would say. And and playing what? Yeah, he is. Now, what's going to happen is with McAvoy coming back, it's going to dwindle down in terms of points and ice time a little bit. But what a player. I like how they're separating them, too. Like with McAvoy coming yep. back, you're not seeing the old McAvoy Lindholm combo. You're seeing the McAvoy Grizzly. Carlo Lindholm, and I think that's fucking unbelievable. How's uh, how's Carlo been since the the last uh, last conky RA? I know there's been like, fuck, he's had what about five or six uh, of them too, in his career? Too many. He's been pretty solid out there. I mean, he's the type of guy, Biz. When you don't notice him, it's pretty a good. It's a good thing because he's not not screwing up. Right. I mean, he's not an offensive dynamo. He chips in here and there, but. I think he's looked all right out there. Uh, back to uh, forward. Yeah, he's got a basset hound named Dollar. Uh, the dog, it's like 12 years old. And like, I guess he walks around the North End of Boston. And it's like he's like the, a celebrity of the neighborhood. Or the dog is a she <laughs> rather, Dollar. So everybody knows about Dollar, the, the basset hound. It's I think I don't think he's married or anything. I think it's just him and this basset oh, hound. Oh, yeah. So. You, well, if, if I mean, I think you just teed him up for a few resi residuals. Also, uh, there. McAvoy sent me. Um, he, he partnered up with Polka Dog, which I think is like a dog treat food company that's where granelli got his birthday cake for his mop yeah rocket <laughs> fuel treat so the fucking dog that ran me over was probably on a cocaine version of the rocket fuel from yeah. polka dog and mcavoy but pretty nice for him to send a sick hat orange hat hey my dog works. loves them i gave ravioli a couple of those treats and she will not stop begging for him she loves those things back to the bees biz they won their first three lost one Won seven in a row, lost one. They've won the last six, 16 and two, 11 and 0 at home, ties the NHL record for longest season open and home win streak they put on the line Friday. Uh, back to Patrick Kane. I, I, that's not going to happen. I, Patrick Kane ain't coming to the Bruins. I hate to put fucking water on okay. the room, boys. I, I, do not believe that is going to happen at all. It's just too complex with their cap situation. It's just not a move the Bruins would make. Not going to happen. What do you got for this? one year right. with, with, with Bergeron and Krejci possibly gone? And we'll see. I mean, I don't know how big of a fan Wit is of the Boston Bruins. I think he's happy that his hometown team's doing well. But R.A. and Grinnell, I'm going to promise to not watch any games, and I'm going to stay as far away as possible because I've re reverse mushed the Bruins. So all of you Bruins fans, you're welcome for this incredible start. I said they would not make playoffs this year. They're probably going to win the President's Trophy and go all the way to the Cup Finals, baby. Thank you, Biz. You're welcome. 18 one baby. You're welcome. You're welcome, New Jersey. See, I, I hopped off the Buffalo hate train. What happens? Eight game losing streak. Maybe I got to start hating them again. What just mentioned uh, Patrice Bergeron and GM for Montreal, Ken Hughes. He was on our buddy Chris Nyland and Tim Stapleton's podcast, Rod Knuckles. And he talked about Bergeron and how he's left so much money on the table. Basically, the Habs were, were willing to give him nine and a half million. And he said, nope, six, five. Like this, what Sid said a few years ago. Got to take less to win. And like Mashchan refuses to take any more money than Bergeron makes. It was a great interview. I mean, if you haven't listened to it yet, Nyland let me roll the clip us. here. All right, let me there roll the go. clip. And then his next deal came up and he called. He goes, what do you think I'm worth? I said, oh, highest paid players, eight and a half million. I think at the time it was, I think it was Perry and Getzlaff actually were the two highest. And I said, you're, you're, you're nine and a half. He's like, how did I become nine and a half? And I said, well, <laughs> You're because you're better, in my opinion, and because there's a team four and a half hours north of northeast of here who uh, would is their your team's greatest rival. They're dying for a first line center. They're dying for a captain. Wow. Like it's just a premium. And he said, "Yeah, but if I make that kind of money, we'll never win. And I want to win. I want six and a half." And I was like, six and a half? You gotta be kidding me. Um, but and I said to him, you're like, that's great. The problem is you can't make everybody else take less. Yeah. And he always said, All I can do is lead by example. I'll do my part and it'll be up to everybody else whether they want to fall on the line or not. And that type of character, there's a reason why the Bruins have had that kind of success. And Brad Marsha, 
refuse to take more than Patrice Bergeron. Yeah, awesome. There you go. I mean, it, shout out Knuckles and Stapes. They're doing a hell of a job. Awesome. Oh, Knuckles, he's the best, man. He's like, so he, he he doesn't beat around the bush at not, and he's plain spoken. He's a great interviewer. So if you haven't checked it out, by all means. But, I mean, Bruins fans know what, how, what Bergeron's been doing this for years. But imagine, I mean, what do you think he's left on the table? You guys wouldn't leave this much. In the what table you should be played. thanking him for is the <laughs> fact that he's essentially, from a leadership perspective, set the foundation and set them up for success for how many years now? By doing that, because every guy gets bumped down like a million or two bucks, and that's when you get the money to go spend on those guys that you're going to need come uh, come grind time. So to hear that, and then of course there were some people chiming in like, "Yeah, right, he was going to make more than those top end players around the league, like Getzlov and Perry. He had ten goals in the lockout year, and that was a year you don't shut the fuck up, dude. You think people cared about a half season? We're talking about Patrice Bergeron here, one of the best two way centers to ever play the game." The guy was getting nine and a half wherever he wanted it, other than if, if you know, it, so so to hear that was was absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, it is crazy. I mean, he's probably left 15, 20 million on the table, but I mean, it's unfortunate. Who would you rather have? have Let's start Malkin a GoFundMe. Patrice Bergeron. Let's start a GoFundMe. Bergeron. Yeah, I mean, I'm yeah, you're a 100% you Bergeron. Bergeron. I'm throwing it out there to people listening. If Genny Malkin or Patrice Bergeron. I think right. Malkin's far, far more inconsistent than Bergeron is. So I, like I think that I, 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 I think that you're fucking you got your uh, Bruins undies on. Hey, I, mean, I, I think it's on. a great argument, but look at Evgeny Malkin's career, bro. 